name is Miss Torres. And I'm Mr. Fader. And today we are going to teach you how to notice and explore your thinking after you read a text. So when I was a little girl in elementary, I read books from the Little House on the Prairie series. I remember I have, after I had finished the sixth book in the series, which was called The Long Winter, um, I had a lot of thoughts about how dangerous it was to live in the 1800s during winter times. The book did a wonderful job of portraying how scarce food could get and how dangerous it was for a family to live in the 1800s during winter time. And um, it really explored how Laura Ingalls and her family survived during this winter. While the book ended on a happy note, it was probably the most serious book out of the series because it addressed the issues of how not preparing for winter in those times could literally mean the death or of your family. And it left quite the impression on me because I spent a lot of time after reading the book, researching and thinking about how devastating winters were in the 1800s. All right, now, when me and my sister were younger, my mom used to read to us before bed. And one of the books that she would read was the Harry Potter series. And the first one was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, after my mom would read the chapter for the night and me and my sister would go to bed, I remember laying in bed thinking about how amazing and different it would be to be able to use magic as Harry and his friends did. So again, we are going to teach you how to notice and explore your thinking after reading text. Um, and we are going to start by telling you the story of When Marion Sang by, Pom by Pam Munez Ryan. When Marion Sang by Pam Munoz Ryan. No one was surprised that Marion loved to sing. After all, she learned to she listened to father singing in the mornings as he dressed. Mother often hummed while she worked in the kitchen. Sometimes Marianne and her little sisters, Ethel May and Alice, sang songs all afternoon. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. However, her voice was distinct, strong and velvety, and able to climb more than 24 notes. Everyone wanted to hear Marianne sing. Alexander Robinson, the church choir at the Union Baptist Church in South Philadelphia, wanted to hear Marion sing even though she was not quite eight years old and sometimes sang too loud. He asked her to perform a duet with her friend Viola Johnson. As Viola sang the high part and Marion sang the low, their harmony blended like a silk braid. Dear to the heart of the shepherd, dear are the sheep of his fold. Dear is the love that he gives me, dearer than silver or gold. Church folks started whispering and followed with out and out, talking about Marion's remarkable gift. Neighboring churches heard the news and invited Marion to perform. One advertisement said, come and hear the baby contralto, 10 years old, and people came. When Marion sang, it was often with her eyes closed, as if finding the music with it. Audience heard not only words, but feelings too. Spirited worship, tender affection, and nothing short of joy. She was chosen for the celebrated People's Chorus, a hundred voices from all of the Black Church choirs in Philadelphia. She was one of the youngest members and had to stand on a chair so those in the back could see the pride of South Philadelphia. Her father was proud too, but protective. He didn't want anyone taking advantage of his child. Father's love made Marion feel important. When he died after an injury at the reading terminal where he sold ice, tragedy filled Marion's heart and sometimes her songs. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Mother was happy for Marion's success, but reminded her that no matter what, she studied to take a little extra time and do it well. Marion didn't need extra encouragement when it came to singing. She practiced her part of each song and often learned all the other parts too. For her music was serious business and had more than anything, she, was, she, had, she hoped to sometimes go to the music school. Church members promised tuition for our Marion if she accepted. Since father's death, Marion worked at odd jobs and sang in concert programs in order to help support her family. It wasn't until 1915, when Marion was 18, that she finally went to a music school and patiently waited in line for an application. But the girl behind the counter helped everyone except Marion. Was she invisible? 
Finally, the girl said, we don't take colored. Her voice sounded like a steel door clanking shut. Marion knew about prejudice. She had seen the trolley drive past her family as they stood at the corner. She knew that her people were always the last to be helped in the store, but she could not understand how anyone who was surrounded by the spirit and beauty of music could be so narrow-minded. She felt sick in her stomach and in her heart. Didn't they know that her skin was different, but her feelings were the same? Couldn't she be a professional singer if she was a Negro? With unwavering faith, Mother told her that there would be another way to accomplish what would have been done at the school. Marion believed her mother. She took voice lessons in her own neighborhood, continued with the choirs, and sometimes performed at Negro churches and colleges. When Marion saw a Metropolitan Opera performance of the tragic opera Madame Butterfly, Thoughts of formal music education again came to mind. How wonderful would it be to sing on a grand stage, act out a dramatic role, and wear beautiful costumes. The passionate music inspired her and she was determined to study. But opera was simply the sun and the moon, a dream that seemed too far to reach. He got the wind and the rain in his hands. He got the sun and the moon right in his hands. He got the wind and the rain in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. As a young woman in her 20s, Marion was invited to many states to sing. Sometimes she traveled with her accompanist by train, where they were seated in dirty, crowded Jim Crow car reserves for Negroes. When she arrived at her destination, she often sang the same program twice to separate audiences, one black and one white, or to segregated groups, whites in the best seats and blacks in the balcony. Many times she was welcomed enthusiastically by her audiences and then could not get a hotel room because she was a Negro. No matter what humiliation she endured, Miriam sang her heart with dignity. Her voice left audiences weeping or in hushed awe as they strained to hold on to the memory of every opulent note. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go. Go down Moses, way down in Egypt's lands, tell O Pharaoh, tell let my people go. Marion still wanted to advance her singing with master teachers. With the help of friends, she was granted an audition with the fierce yet famous Giepsi Bogetti. When she arrived at his studio, Mr. Bogetti announced that he didn't have time or room for new students. Too afraid to even look at him, Marion took a deep breath. Slowly, with great emotions, she sang, Deep River, my home is over Jordan. Deep River, Lord, I want to cross over into campground. Don't you want to go to that gospel feast, that promised land where it all is peace? Oh, deep river, Lord, I want to cross over into campground. Marion finally lifted her eyes. I will make room for you right away, Mr. Bogetti said firmly, and I will need only two years with you. After that, you will be able to go anywhere and sing for anybody. Again, Marion's devoted church community raised the money for her lessons. Marion worked hard with Mr. Bogetti, and sometimes, for practice, she sang scenes from Italian operas with him. Her recitals now included German songs, too, but other languages troubled her. She didn't want simply to sing beautiful words like Dokken wein Dokken in Wald und und Field. She wanted to know what the words meant. Dark, how dark is the woods and the fields? Other Negro singers had gone overseas to de develop their voices and learn foreign languages. Why not her? After all, Europe was different. There, she was able to sing to mixed audiences and travel without the restrictions put on her people in America. Marion needed to grow, and Mother agreed. A bundle of trepidation and excitement, Marion boarded the Ile de France in October 1927. She even, she had never been so far from her family. She knew her sisters would take care of her mother, but she had already felt twinges of homesickness. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long ways from home, a long ways from home. Sometimes I feel I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. A long ways from home, a long ways from home. Marion studied and eventually invited to perform in concert halls in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. 
The enthusiasm for her singing was so overwhelming that one newspaper in Sweden called it Marian Fever. Audience appalled, applauded in London, cheered in Paris, and pounded on the stage for encores in Russia. In Austria, the world-famous conductor Arturo Tosconti announced that what he had heard once was privileged to hear only once in a hundred years. Marion felt as she had finally achieved some success. She even asked Mother if there was anything she wanted that would make her happy because now Marion could afford to buy it for her. Mother said that all she wanted was for God to hold Marion in the highest of his hands. It seemed like she was already there. Mr. Bogetti had been right. She could go anywhere and sing for anybody. Until she came home to the United States. In 1939, Howard University in Washington, D.C. booked a concert with Marian Anderson and began looking for an auditorium big enough to hold the audience she attracted. They decided that a 4,000 seat Constitution Hall would be perfect. But the manager of the hall said it wasn't available and no other dates were offered because of their white performance only policy. Marion's agent, Sol Horuk, wrote to the hall manager, pointing out that Marion Anderson was the greatest living singers of all time, but it was not good. Enraged fans wrote letters to the newspaper. In protests, Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of the United States, resigned from the organization that sponsored Constitution Hall. Howard University then tried to reserve a large high school and auditorium for an all-white school. Again, they were denied. Now teachers were angry and marched in support of Marion in front of the Board of Education. Washington, D.C. was a boiling pot about to spill over. Wasn't there some place in her own country's capital where Marion Anderson's voice could be heard? Committees formed and held meetings. Finally, with Pre President Roosevelt's approval, the Department of the Interior of the United States government invited Marion to sing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on Easter Sunday. Her country was offering her a momentous invitation, but she had concerns. Would people protest? Was it dangerous? Would anybody come? Examining her heart, Marion realized that although she was a singer first and foremost, she also had become a symbol to her people and she wanted to make it easier for those who would follow her. She said yes. Standing in the shadow of the statue of Lincoln, waiting to be called out, she read the engraved words, the nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Marion looked out on a river of 75,000 people. Her heart beat wildly. Would she be able to utter one note? She took a deep breath and felt the power of her audience's goodwill surge toward her. Marion's sisters were there and mother too. Marion stood straight and tall, then she closed her eyes and sang, My country tis of thee, secret land of liberty, let freedom ring. A roaring cheer followed every song. At the end of the program, the people pleaded for more, when she began her thought-provoking encore. Oh, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrows. Silence settled on the multitudes. For almost 16 years after the Lincoln Memorial performance, Marion sang for kings and queens, presidents and prime ministers, famous composers and conductors. She received medals, awards, and honorary degrees for her magnificent voice. But there was still one place Marion had not sung. When she finally invited, a dream came true. Marion wondered how people would react. No Negro singer has ever done such a thing. She would be the first. But she didn't need to worry after she signed the contract somebody said welcome home on opening night excitement charged into the air as marion walked into the wings the orchestra began her stomach fluttered she walked onto the grand stage trembling she straightened her costume and waited for the pounding music she knew to be her cue tonight was her debut at the metropolitan opera at long last she had reached the sun and the moon the curtains parted and Marion sing. Okay, so now that we have read the text, we are going to explore and notice our thinking using this thought organizer. 
So in this thought organizer, there's two sections. There's the I think and I wonder and the we think and we wonder. We're going to focus on the I think and I wonder. So in the I think and I wonder, I am going to list the thoughts I had about Marion and the book. So the first thought I had was that I think it's cool. I think it's cool that Marion got to sing with the Philadelphia choir. So there's one thought I had for after reading the text. Um, something I wondered about was I wonder if Mr. Bogetti was not going to teach Marion at first because of the color of her skin. Okay, so now another thought that occurred to me was, I think, Marion's father would be proud of the woman she has become. And then one thing I wondered about was, I wonder if the president hadn't have I wonder if the president hadn't given Marion permission to sing at the Lincoln Memorial would she have gotten to sing at other places in the U.S. Okay, so as you can see, I listed four things I thought or wondered about um, after reading the text. So the point to this exercise is to really make sure you record how you feel and how you think after you read a text. And then we're going to go back and we're going to explore what we thought by answering why. So why did I think these things? Why did I wonder these things? So I thought and wondered these things 
because it seemed unfair that Mirian had to struggle so much and live almost in fear to just sing in public spaces. So let's go over this again. So in this section, as an individual, you're going to list your thoughts or the things you wondered about. For me, I thought it was cool that Marion got to sing with the Philadelphia Choir. I wonder if Mr. Bogetti was not going to teach Marion at first because of the color of her skin. I think Marion's father would be proud of the woman she has become. And I wonder if the president hadn't given Marion permission to sing at Lincoln Memorial, would she have gotten to sing at other places in the U.S.? And to explore my thinking and why I wondered and thought these things, I thought and wondered these things because it seemed unfair that Marion had to struggle so much and live almost in fear to just sing in public spaces. So one thing I want to emphasize to you all is that you as an individual, your thoughts and your ideas and the, your curiosities, they all matter. So in the middle, I want you all to draw yourself. So I'm going to draw myself. Don't judge my art. I'm not an artist. And by doing this, this will help personalize the information for you all. Um, and it'll remind you that you matter as a person and as a human being. Your ideas are worth value. Your thoughts are worth value. And it's important that after we read text to always make sure you go back and think about it and you record it. And you can do that by using this thought organizer. Okay, now that we've done the I think and I wonder, we're going to do the we think and we wonder side to the thought organizer. Me and Ms. Torres did something like this with our other class, so we're going to share with you what we did with our other class and what we thought together after we read the text when Marianne sang. All right, so we think it was unfair that Marion couldn't go to music school because the color of her skin. And we also, we think Marion was brave and bold to sing her heart out with dignity. Another thing that we wondered after we read the text is we both wondered why the U.S. was so adverse to a colored singer when Europe was not.
Another thing we wondered was, we wonder what Marion's voice sounded like. All right, now we, we both had thought these things and wondered. We thought it was unfair that Marion couldn't go to music school because of the color of her skin. We think Marion was brave and bold to sing her heart out with dignity. We both wondered why you, the U.S. was so adverse to a colored singer when Europe wasn't. And we wondered what Marion's voice sounded like. Now to show why we thought these things and why we wondered these things, we're going to write it down in the why section. We thought these thoughts and wondered these things because we enjoyed Marianne's character. and felt like it was so unfair for someone who could do such a wonderful thing with her voice to suffer from segregation. Okay, so we wrote when we thought of these things and wondered these things because we enjoyed Marion's character and felt like it was so unfair for someone who could do such a wonderful thing with her voice to suffer from segregation. Now, like what we did with the I think and the I wonder, we're going to draw ourselves in the middle. But since you didn't do this alone, you did it with your partner and me and Ms. Torres did it with the class. We are going to draw ourselves in the middle. So I'm going to draw me and Ms. Torres first. Okay, this is Ms. Torres with her ponytail. Her glasses. And this is me. With my glasses. Now me and Miss Torres didn't just do this by itself, we also did it with our class. So we're gonna draw our class members just as stick figures to keep it simple for right now. Okay, so now that we have modeled to you the I think and the I wonder and the we think and we wonder graphic organizer, we want you all in your own notebooks to create an organizer that looks just like this. So there's four bubbles, there's a Y section on the bottom, and there's two sides. There's the I think and I wonder, and there's the we think and we wonder. So in the I think and I wonder, we want you all to read the Alice Coachman Jumps for the Sky article. And after you read the article, we want you all to list um, either four thoughts or things you wondered. So this is Susie's example. So this is a student made example. And this is Susie. She stated that she thought, I think Alice working at the age of 10 would be very hard and tiring. She wondered, I wonder what it would be like to go to a big track meet like the Tuskegee Relay. She also thought, I think Alice would have been very disappointed to not go to the Olympics. And she also wondered, um, I wonder how happy Alice was to win a gold medal. 
So these are the thoughts and the things she wondered about after she had read the text. She recorded them in this graphic organizer. Then she explained why. She said, I thought and wondered these things because it takes hard work and dedication to become as good as Alice did at a sport. So this is her organizer. And then in the middle, she drew herself. Because again, I want you all to remember that your thoughts, your ideas, and your curiosities, they matter. So you need, you should draw yourself and it'll help personalize the information for you and remind you that um, your uh, thought process is important. So I will give you all um, seven minutes to read the Alice Coachman Jumps for the Sky and then to complete this part of the thought organizer.
Okay, now that you've completed the I think and the I wonder section, you're going to complete the we think and we wonder section. And you're not going to do this section alone. You're going to be with a partner. And together, you are going to complete this together. It's very important that you do it together because that's the whole purpose of this assignment is that you guys combine, combine your thoughts and you can learn more from the text. Now this is Susie and Jack, and this is their example of what they've done together. They put, we think that Alice was a hard worker as she worked to help her parents. We wonder why Alice's parents wanted her to act like a lady. We think that Alice was an awesome girl to have beaten the boys at the game. They also put, we wonder how much harder it was for Alice to jump from the jumping surface was wet. Also, if she could have jumped even higher if the surface was dry. And just as you're going to do, after they completed their four thoughts, they answered why they thought or wondered these things. They put, we thought and wondered these things because for Alice to get a gold medal is awesome. And if she was made to be a lady and not beat the boys, she never would have been high jumping. Now, just like Susie and Jack did, they drew themselves in the middle, not alone, but together because they completed this together. Now, it's also important that they did it together because it teaches us that each of our thoughts are important again and that when you combine your thoughts, you teach others what you have thought and you can share what you think and your experiences on how the text made you feel. Now, when you complete this with your partner, we're going to give you five minutes to complete it. Now, remember, it's very important that you do this together, not by yourself. Come out with four thoughts or four things that you wondered about Alice Coachman, Jump from the Sky and explain why you had these thoughts. And don't forget to draw yourselves in the middle to add that personal touch to the assignment.
So now that you have completed the assignment, we want you all to create a video response. So just use your phones or use whatever you have available to you and post it to YouTube and make sure you email it to us uh, at a link with this Gmail. And in this video response, you are going to present yours and your partner's individual parts. So the part you all did on your own, both of you in the same video. And then you're going to present the part you guys created together. This will help you learn how to um, present in a digital setting. And it will also help share with us and with your classmates who will also probably view the video um, the thoughts and things you wondered about when you read Alice Kirchman Jumps for the Sky. Today, we learned how to generate questions and thoughts after we read by using the I think and I wonder, we think and we wonder thought organizer to, uh, to deepen our understanding about a story or text. When we read When Marion Sang, we didn't just simply read the book, but we analyzed Marion's situation and how it made us feel after we read the text. It is always important to respond to a text after you read it because reflecting on it can help us gain new information and understand how we think as individuals and how we think with each other. Thank you for Thank watching you. and have a good day.